Welcome back, Michael here. Linux Mint 21.2 codename Victoria is ready and presents the second point release of Linux Mint 21. Traditionally, the second point release appears as an effective remedy against the evil summer slump. Today, we take a look at Linux Mint 21.2 and at the same time at Cinnamon 5.8. Make yourself ready and let's get it started. Linux Mint is a popular Linux distribution known for its user-friendliness and stability. The main features of Linux Mint are usability, stability, multimedia support and community. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu LTS and can therefore enjoy all the benefits of Ubuntu. Overall, Linux Mint offers a solid combination of usability, stability and extensive software support. It's a good choice for users looking for a simple and reliable Linux distribution. What's new? Revised design, cinnamon styles, improved flatpak compatibility, Warpinato is hardened and cinnamon 5.8. Let's check the technical key points. The minimum requirements are as follows. 2 GB RAM, 4 GB or more recommended, 20 GB disk space, 100 GB or more recommended, and a screen resolution of 1024x768 resolution. As a classic LTS distribution, Linux Mint follows the static version structure of Ubuntu LTS. This means that the package statuses are largely frozen and they are mostly security updates. Exceptions are e.g. the Cinnamon Desktop, the X apps, Firefox or Thunderbird. Linux Mint 21.2 is only available for 64-bit hardware. The Debian package is used as the native package format, supplemented by Flatpak. The primary package management is APT. Now let's come to the hacks and important commands. Refresh package sources with apt sudo apt update. Update packages sudo apt upgrade. Remove unnecessary packages after updating sudo apt auto remove. Refresh Flatpak packages Flatpak update. The fully automated chain looks like this. sudo apt update ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade minus y ampersand ampersand sudo apt auto remove minus y ampersand ampersand flatpak update minus y. You could put this command chain into a script and schedule it via cron job, but you don't necessarily have to do it with a terminal. You can also use the update manager. The update manager of Linux Mint belongs to the top class. You can also set how upgrades are to be handled. For example, on confirmation or fully automatically. I would generally recommend working with it. As you saw, I clicked on refresh. It's now syncing the sources and checking for update packages. We have a bind 9 update package. I will install it now. My system is now up to date. Like I said, you can also set up the settings. Go to preferences and then automation. And here you can set up automatic package updates. You can also perform some other updates, for example, cinnamon spices and flat pack updating automatically. And last but not least, remove obsolete kernels and dependencies. It's not a bad idea to activate all of them. Then you don't have to care about any kind of updates. But it's up to you how you will decide. The potential target group consists of desktop users. Linux Mint has always concentrated on this with great success. The distro is ready to go and comes with everything you need for the desktop. This benefits newcomers in particular who may not be so familiar with the common programs and are taken by the hand here and also provided with sensible selection. So anyone who needs a well-tuned and stable system is in good hands with Linux Mint. Now let's come to the system measurement. My system claws 8.9 GB from the disk. The initial benchmark value and memory consumption was just under 700 MB. The number of installed packages after the first start was 2165 Debian packages. At the time of creating this video, Cinnamon 5.8.2 was available. This video was based on the pre-release beta version of Linux Mint 21.2. It is possible that there will be updates before the release which will introduce a newer Cinnamon version, so don't worry. 
The Cinnamon desktop has been mindful developed for many years without bumping users over the head with too many changes. Now and then this happens, for example, the new icons introduced with Linux Mint 21.1. Numerous users had complained that they didn't like the orange set. I couldn't quite understand it, but okay. And this version, the symbols have been revised again. This shows that the community is being listened to and that wishes are being implemented. Once again, I noticed that the default theme is no longer green. As you can see, it's blue. A bit unexpected, but welcome for me. I never use the mint green anyway. New in Cinnamon 5.8 is the color changer when hoovering. So if I hoover to some apps pinned to the taskbar, the accent color of the theme is now used as background, as you can see. New and especially worth mentioning in Cinnamon 5.8 is the fact that the themes are easier to set. GNOME users know this because of the Lipid Wider design guideline. This now filters through to here. So Flatpak apps also benefits with better design integration. In the system settings, we can set the changes under themes here. Here we first have the styles. Mint Y is the familiar creation. Those who want the intermediate step go to Mint L. Stands for legacy. And if you are absolutely on retro, take the Mint X. This is how Linux Mint looks in the past. In the appearance, we have now mixed dark and light. Let me show you what this means. I will start the file browser Nemo. And I now switch to dark. And you can see the windows are switching to dark. If I switch to light, you see also the windows are light and also the taskbar is now light. If I go back to mix, the taskbar will be go dark. That's the difference. In addition, the corresponding color is shown in the bar below. This makes for interesting mixtures. You can also change the color of the icons. I will now move through all. If you miss the traditional settings, click on Advanced Settings. All in all, this looks very good and simplifies the design change, in my opinion. What do you think? Write your opinion about in the comments. As far as wallpapers are concerned, with Linux Mint you can blindly rely on the fact that a nice set is included free of charge. Victoria does not disappear here either. Cinnamon is designed for productivity and comes with a high degree of consistency. Thus, at first glance, the versions are like two peas in a pot. But the work often only catches the eye at second glance. This is also the case here. If you started with Linux Mint five years ago, Cinnamon 5.8 will seem familiar and new to you at the same time. Since most of us have worked with Windows in the past or still have to, the change to Cinnamon is marginal. If you are comfortable with Windows, you will be also comfortable with Linux Mint and Cinnamon. Now let's check the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 5.15. As browser, there's Firefox. As email client, there's Thunderbird. As office package, there's LibreOffice. And as software container, there's Flatpak. Now let's come to the general pre-installed software. I continue to be very happy with the software stack on Linux Mint. The selection of what they include is coherent and helpful in my eyes. I can't complain about that. What you need, you get right away. And what's missing, you can install in the software manager, which is the name for the Linux Mint App Store. You can get everything here that is also available in Ubuntu. But here, the exception is that Linux Mint relies on Flatpak and Ubuntu on Snap. So the overall selection is almost the same, but not fully identical. What I still have to note here is that LibreOffice 7.3 is provided. This is the end of the line. Support for this version ended at the beginning of 2023. If this is not suitable for you, you can integrate and use LibreOffice 7.5 via the LibreOffice Developer PPA. Alternatively, the latest version of LibreOffice can also be installed as Flatpak container. In this case, go to the App Manager, search for LibreOffice, 
wait a second and then you see here the flat pack package is here available and you can install it but i recommend you before you install this package uninstall the other LibreOffice package otherwise you have some mix up Warpinator is available in version 1.6.3 and indicates limited functionality at startup and offers to define a code via group mode. If the 5.15 kernel supplied by default is too old for you, you can also use the hardware enablement stack related kernel by Ubuntu via the update manager under View and then Linux kernels. I continue here. And here you see 5.19 is available. 5.19 is the kernel of the latest Ubuntu 23.04 version. And this kernel is backported to the LTS version Ubuntu 22.04, the base of Linux Mint 21. This is replaced every few months by a kernel backported from the Ubuntu STS version. The advantage of this is that it provides newer drivers and general improvements that the LTS kernel does not get. After a fresh Linux Mint installation or upgrade, I recommend taking a look in the system reports. Here we get information if something is missing or the system detects something unusual. With a fresh system, these are, for example, if timeshift backup has not been set up or if translations are missing. So now let's come to my conclusion. Linux Mint 21.2 is rock solid. It comes with a new Cinnamon version that brings visual improvements. The user friendliness, the productivity of the desktop and the reliability are second to none. If the 5.15 kernel is too old for you, I showed you how to install the latest HWE kernel from Ubuntu. In the context of a new installation, you can also directly use the Edge image of Linux Mint. This comes directly with the new HWE kernel instead of the LTS kernel. So, if you have a new computer or new components in your computer, the Edge image might be the better choice. If the computer is already 1, 2, 3 years or even older, you will probably have no problems with the LTS kernel. I can recommend upgrading from Linux Mint 21 or 21.1 to the new 21.2 version with a clear consistency, but not immediately after release. Experience shows that you will do well if you wait a few weeks. Your current version will continue to get security updates etc. so it won't get bad overnight. Sometimes problems only become apparent after release when a large number of users are using the version and then problems are reported and fixed. I would rather wait about three weeks in the hope of not picking up any of those bugs. What do you think? Write your opinions about in the comments. So well-round version that is fun to use. The next version will be Linux Mint 21.3, which we traditionally expect as a present under the Christmas tree in 2023. We will see what comes then during our Christmas holiday. For now, we enjoy the summer and the next Linux Mint 21.2 version. My compliments to the developer team. Good work, keep it up. I would like to thank you for the kind attention. We'll see you in the next video if you want. See you. Peace, ladies and gentlemen.